Hey friends, this is John here with the Paddles Up Experiment Day 9. Today uh, has been interesting. Every day is interesting. <laughs> when you're learning how to put your paddles up and let the current take you. The current of spirit take you where the current of spirit knows that your totality of your life is representing, expressing, and is being on planet Earth while you're here in this tuna can of a of a human sack <laughs> called the meat sack. Um, kind of graphic, I know, but the reality is, is that we're flesh and bone, and the real us, the bigger us, the higher us, the the God us, one with God, part of us is bigger or as big as the universe itself because if we're in God and he's in us however that works we're one with the very substance of that love then love is bigger than everything right so if love knows all and love is bigger than everything and that's the substance we're made of whether we realize that or not then there's a quote process that is either trusted or it's not and for many of us this is a challenge because i know with my life it's i can get stuff done and take it take care of it so what i think i'm taking care of on my own just the same as you i'm sure if you're a go-getter if you're a doer and you have a little bit of know-how you can get things done well the challenge with that is is we don't understand or we don't realize how much of our conditioning and our our small self called the ego is leading the show we we really don't know that level until we start to awaken out of it through surrender to say okay that part of me was really blind and i had some darkness going on there some some veiled perceptions, some veiled perspectives and, and understanding. And so I didn't quite see it as clearly as I do at this moment. And then there'll be more, there'll be more layers coming off. There'll be more awakenings and this is eternal. It doesn't stop. So one of the things I wanted to share with you today was that, you know, when we all have this innate sense of, of, taking action in a certain direction, whether it's the smallest things or the biggest things. So for example, you need some food in the refrigerator. And so the natural thing to do was to go, go to the store, go to a market, go to a friend's house, whatever, but to go and actually physically pick yourself up and walk or drive or bicycle down to that market or that store or that friend's house. So that's just a natural kind of instinct to do that, to go get food, right? That's the small things. The bigger things would be like big decisions, like what, what is the next move for my business? Uh, when, when, yeah, am I gonna start a business? Am I, I have a calling or callings, things calling to me. So what does that look like when I begin? Geographical moves, moving to another city or state or country, bigger issues, right? And then we go deep down into the emotional side of things and the spiritual side of things that even deeper, these big transformative things when we awaken. There's a whole host of decision making. One thing I've learned up until this point with Paddles Up Experiment is the more I lean not under my own understanding and acknowledge this area right here where God is in spirit love is in spirit right here heart centeredness the more i surrender to it by dropping 18 inches down into that unlimited place that eternal now place and the more i become present the more direction becomes clear and i can't state this enough is that many of us are fogged up and fogged over and have foggy brains because we're putting this garbage into us and and i've just i've been just as guilty of putting bad food into this vessel and what happens is in the natural it begins to fog our brain and then all we want to do is lay around or go to sleep take a nap or just zone out on some movie and 
the problem with that, the difficulty is the clarity is just not there. And it, and a lot of people are crying out and they're saying, God, you know, well, we should just show me. We should just show me what to do. We should show me what direction. We should show me what my call is. We should show me what my purpose is. And it's this constant begging through the fog that was conditioned to believe it had to come that way through begging. Religion does a really good job of the beg. You know, they don't see, hear, feel, or touch God tangibly. So therefore, they think that there's a separation, but that's an illusion because we can't be separated from a God that's everywhere and in everything. Some things are just dark. A lot of things are light. A lot of things are dark. So just because things are dark doesn't mean that God doesn't overshadow everything. And so we think that there's a separation going on. And when we feel that we're separated because God isn't moving according to our timetable the way we want it, the way we conditioned to believe it should be, then we get disappointed and numb out. We go eat a tri-tip sandwich with lots of greasy cheese on it or something, you know, whatever your vice is. And then we're like, okay, God, you're not, you're not answering me. You're not answering me. You're not answering me. And so then we just kind of blame it on the separation. We blame it on the devil. We blame it on other entities, right? God's just not ready to talk to me. God's just wants me to suffer kind of weird thinking, right? But if we were to just take the simple steps of clearing ourselves out by eating fresh fruits and fresh vegetables, eating clean foods, for example, and I know some of you just don't want to hear that. And that's okay if you want to stay in brain fog and stay confused. But I'm willing to bet most of you don't, especially if you listen to our videos and listen to our podcast for any length of time and stayed with it. You, you, you're you not one of those people that just want to check out. You may feel like it sometimes, right? We have some difficulties, but there again, there's the illusion of separation. So on the flip side of that, though, if we clear out, begin to clear our physiological system, our 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 neurological system, the neurons, the cells in our body, we begin to clean that out. Then our consciousness is awakened to the point to where we can elevate automatically to a level that speaks Christ language, the mind of Christ. See, the mind of Christ is really 18 inches down into this arena. It's the mind, it's the center, it's the hub of the eternal now space of heart centeredness right here. This is the, the spirit, the heart of the matter. And I'm just saying right here because really in science and in anatomy, what some scientists believe is that the this, that this, this spirit is actually seated on the back of our spine. And then when we talk about the heart, the heart actually emits a magnetic field that's been proven through it scientifically and medically, emits an energetic field, a magnetism coupled with the spirit down our spine. So in this area, front and back, it's safe to say that the spirit and the heart are right there. So we know that spirit is bigger than that, but in our containers called the tuna can of life, right? It's just an analogy, guys. Don't get upset over tuna can issue. Uh, <laughs> the, the human body that we're stuffed into is very, very limited in relatively speaking, in human terms, right? We, we live in a 3D world. However, that's not the real world. It's more of an illusion than it is real. Real dimensional living, real dimensional awakening and understanding is when we start looking more into the fourth dimension or fourth density and fifth density worlds, which simply means there's an ascension that takes place. The more we let go and the more we surrender, the more we receive, go into receive mode rather than beg mode. And it, at first, it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Yeah, I, John, I was surrendered for a half a minute and it didn't work. Or, you know, I, I just, I lifted my hands in the air like I just don't care. And I was surrendered. And I put my battles up in it for an hour. Or I did it for 40 days. I went on this crazy 40-day fast and I had some things happen, but not the things that I was really hoping for, like a brand new car and a brand new wife and a brand new life. More money. More money. A better job. A better calling. A better this. A better that. It didn't happen. Well... That's easy to explain, you guys. 
because when we've been conditioned to believe that it has to be a certain way, come in a certain package on time, certain time, certain form, a certain format, all of those things, that all comes through conditioning and an egoic stance that we don't even realize we're doing sometimes. And when that happens, then we get disappointed when it doesn't come the way we want. If I would have got, if I would have married this other Amy, not the Amy, but the Amy I thought it was, it was a counterfeit. It was the Amy, Amy pre Amy. I would have been miserable. I guarantee I would have been miserable. It just would not be a fit. I've checked in one time, I think, over the last 22 years to find out what this individual is doing just only because they were related to somebody that was on my social media feed and I happened to click over there and boom, there they were. And I just knew, I just knew. It was, it was appearance, it was uh, spiritual, it was soul. Everything was shown to me in a split second and I just knew, oh, I would have been miserable. So that all happened on a higher dimension than 3D. And it, and it came in an unconventional way, unconventional timing in a time in my life when I didn't feel I was prepared at all. I wasn't spiritually awake at the time like I thought I was. And the list goes on. Why is that? Because when there is a suddenly, when there is a synchronistic, synchronistic moment that happens, a divine appointment, if you want to call it that, it has little to do with our conditioning. It has more to do with God showing us how sovereign and how amazing that realm is in the 5D existence of unconditional love. Because remember, if it's unconditional, love just wants to do stuff for us and in us without condition. Just think of it this way, guys. When you have a good daddy on planet Earth, is your good daddy waiting for you, the crescendo of you just speaking right, getting it right, praying it right, doing it right, to want to just bless you out of the blue in a surprise moment? I think not. We're talking about a good daddy now, okay? So these are things to kind of entice us into the conscious level of Christ mindedness, the mind of Christ. Because we can't obtain that through the egoic world. We can't attain that through all of our learning and our education, all of our doing, all of our action taking. We can't do it just by knowledge alone. Because remember, love surpasses knowledge. And that's for good reason. So that we can be led by this rather than this. So Oftentimes, we don't get what we've pre-planned. We don't get what we've asked for. We don't get what we think we should want in our lives or need. Oftentimes, it's much better than that, but it may not be perceived as such right out of the gate. So here's a good one for my, my example is, you know, God's going to present opportunities to us that don't look very lucrative sometimes or they don't, they don't match our monetary a vision or they don't match what our mate may we may think we want on the cover of that magazine right we're like oh this is they got to be they got to look this way they're going to be they got to have this shape this height this kind of thing in their bank account or whatever and then god gives us something that sometimes is complete opposite and then you're like okay you start figuring it out right you start going into your intellect and going okay how does this going to work out to get me to where I really saw the vision going by someone speaking over me or where I saw it to be true inside of me. How does that, how does that going to get me there? That's the wrong question to ask, my friends. The thing we should be asking is just, okay, how much is my ego in the way? How much of me, the conditioned me, the small me, how much of that is in the way? of me seeing with foresight beyond that next step. And even more importantly, how much of that condition is keeping me out of the eternal now to where it doesn't matter what lies ahead because it's all taken care of. Remember, we're only promised now, right now. We are eternal now, so it goes on and on forever. But in this human bag right here, <laughs> this bone bag, how much of it is promised? Well, remember, it says here today, gone tomorrow. Life is like a vapor. 
Here today, gone tomorrow. We only have the moment. We only have the present. In, you know, speaking in human terms. So, I think it's really interesting that what's upon Amy and I right now is this this opportunity in front of us that is half the pay. It's in barren wasteland to some, to some may think it's that way in a part of the United States. And we're like, okay, this is out of, off the beaten path in the middle of nowhere. How, there we go. See, how does this relate to what I'm feeling inside? That is not the question. So I, I'm finding myself constantly backing up and throwing my paddles up and to say, okay, if the current is flowing that way, by these other doors closing, not from my own fruition, not my own will, but because God is sovereign and he's stepping in and he's closing those things because he knows that you're in the flow. See, when you're in the current and you're not paddling to get out of that current, but you're staying right down the middle of that current in the river, so to speak, then it's God's job, if you will, to guide that raft, to guide you, to guide your head, to guide the dead man's float when you're floating down that current in that river. It's his job to guide you around the danger. It's his job to guide you around the pitfalls. His job to guide you around those detours that may take you off a side channel, a, a side uh, area into a gully or down another stream or another river to keep you right in the center of his will, the center of the current. And so when that happens, it's very interesting because then you start seeing it from a different perspective and you're like, okay, okay. It doesn't matter if it's half the pay, three quarters less than the pay. It doesn't matter who's standing down. It doesn't matter where it's at. It doesn't matter if I like it or not. No preference, no preference, no preference. When we begin to drop here, then you begin to hear no preference. Why? Because God already knows. He already knows in the center of that flow, preference is going to shift from the egoic stance down to the heart-centered arena. And then you start seeing the bigger picture and then you don't pigeonhole yourself into these little preferences. Like, I like it. I like to live somewhere hot. I like to live somewhere cold. I like to have this much amount in my bank account. I would like my debt paid off by X amount of time. I would like this person to walk into my life or walk out of my life by next month, by next year. Those kind of preferences. I like to drive a Tesla, I'd like to drive a Honda, I'd like to drive a Toyota, I like to have four kids, I like not have four kids, whatever it may be, right? So all of those things that we do in the 3D world of preference begin to float away. And then you're like, okay, I know that what's downstream is always, always going to be best for me and expand me and grow me and mature me. So therefore, whatever it is, I know that God's got it handled in me and given me the grace for it already ahead of time before I even get there. And that's that's where we're at right now with the Paddles Up experiment is just, okay, all right, we know enough to just flow, to just allow and flow no matter what it is packaged in because we know that somehow, some way, something's going to be added to us and removed, more than likely, through expansion and dropping in, then we know it's going to be okay. A-O-A-O-K, like the song says, A-O-K. -okay. So anyway, here we go on another adventure, and uh, you'll be hearing about it as we go. But thanks for chiming in. I hope that helped, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.